Welcome to a new episode of Expert Insights hosted by the Institute of Policy Studies and we are privileged to have Dr. Asha DeVos at IPS today. Uh, Asha, let's talk about the environment but mm -hmm. also something that really kind of gets touched on is the use of technology and the mm -hmm. role of technology mm -hmm. in environment conservation. Uh, given that your expertise in marine conservation, let's kind of focus on that. What kind of role does technology play in marine conservation, particularly if you kind of take into the context of Sri Lanka and developing countries? Mm -hmm. So, one of the things is technology, obviously we live in a world where technology is constantly growing. Mm -hmm. There's always new things you can do, uh, new and exciting things. And uh, one of the things technology can do for you is allow you to collect immense amounts of data at a lower cost. So that's something we have to keep in mind. It's also a way to empower people to sort of become uh, almost sentinels of the ocean so they can start collecting data instead of scientists always have to be out and collect data. So for example, um, you know, there is an app in Australia called Fish Face where it's, it uses artificial intelligence to recognize the species of fish and how much fish has been caught. So the fishermen themselves can actually document what they're catching and how much they're catching. And um, that sort of technology allows us to uh, understand a bit better how much fish we have out there and then come up with numbers for sustainable fisheries for example. Uh, another example would be you have these things called ocean gliders which you can put into the ocean and they can measure salinity temperature and depth over vast distances so you just put it you can control with um, SMS from an office in remotely uh, so it's very cool it can cover vast distances and the cost of running something like that to understand how the ocean is changing um, is a fraction of the cost of having a ship out there with all the personnel and all the fuel costs and you know also the pollution that happens so there are lots of advantages and technology is being used extensively in marine conservation from drones for yeah. example to document health of whales or, or interactions between say boats and whales and what's going right. on um, so there's a whole range of things you can do with technology it's very exciting um, and uh, yeah it, it really is the future but we should not also get too carried away I think um, and the reason I say that is because I think one of the things is we live in a part of the world where we don't have, you know, conservation is not well supported. Um, but we also have to understand that you can still do good science and good conservation work even if you don't have access to that crazy amazing technology. So right. that's something I want a lot of people to understand. So not mm -hmm. think that you can't do it just because you don't have that fancy right. equipment, right? So how do we kind of develop that sense of conservation within Sri Lankan citizens? Is it from the educational system or is it otherwise? Uh, in terms of conservation, I definitely think our education system, I mean, you know, you look at the textbooks and stuff, we don't really talk about conservation and it's such an important topic and these, these are the next generation, they are the people who are going to be working for the planet. And uh, so it should be touched on in all our, in our textbooks, in conversation, in classes. Kids should be given little projects to do conservation projects in their schoolyards. Um, we have to, with everything, if it starts young, it becomes second nature, right? A habit. But if you suddenly are told at the age of 30 that now you're going to protect these species and stop doing what you're doing, people aren't so interested. So it is cultivating that mindset from a very young age that's really important. And allowing people to believe that they can be part of the solution and not just part of the problem. Mm -hmm. And I think we talk a lot in con conservation about the doom and the gloom and things are falling apart, but it's always we point at humans and say, oh, well, you know, it's because of this group of people or whatever. But if we start to say, okay, you know, we're all part of this problem, mm -hmm. how can we come together and start to solve it? So changing that mindset is really important. Okay. And even from a policy perspective, there's a kind of a focus on, you know, the startup culture and, you know, kind of more manufacturing, more kind of business oriented. What can maybe the Sri Lankan government or a government in a developing country do to kind of create innovations in the technological field that is geared towards conservation? So I, again, I think more people need to understand what conservation is about and what's necessary. So I think the voices of the people who are working in these spaces should be um, uh, made louder. They should be all, I mean, you know, our press focuses so much on all these horrible negative things that are happening in the country, but there are amazing stories of people doing incredible things. And I think those should be, uh, you know, really uh, amplified. Um, so that, uh, and then I think we have to come together in different fora where people from different backgrounds are talking on these topics. So I actually run this event, it's an, uh, called Marine Conservation Conversations, and it's an informal gathering of whoever wants to talk about marine conservation. 
if you register, we send you a scientific paper. The intention is I want everyone to realize that science is for everyone. So you don't have to have a degree to engage with it. And then the whole intention is it, we draw together people who are artists, accountants, business people, students. It's this wide variety of people. And my whole intention is to show that, you know, in whatever field you're in, you have a role to play. But what you need is a good foundation in the knowledge. And once you understand the problem, you can start to think about how you can apply your skills to create that change. And so I think that's another way to do it. Having fora which are uh, diverse, bring everyone together in the same room with a sense of respect that everyone's opinion and thought is very important. And celebrating the people who are doing good work so that you know we can bring role models, make role models out of these people. Okay. And on that positive note, thank you very much for joining us here. And uh, thank you and do join us for another episode of Expert Insights.